welcome to the video. We got another Plus It On party here. Calling this one Plus It On Party, Dixieland Delight. Taroni and I are going to be heading through Dixieland. We are starting here in Maryland, going to Harrisonburg right now to meet up with my buddy Jake for some lunch and a beer. And then we're going to be heading right over the border to West Virginia to search for the Plethodon Netting Eye and Plethodon Whirly Eye, the Whirl Salamander and the Cheat Mountain Salamander. Then after that, we're gonna be heading more south and we're ultimately gonna be ending up in Pigeon Mountain, Georgia, taking another look at those gorgeous Pigeon Mountain Salamanders or Plethodon Patriots and a lot more fun on the way. So stay tuned. I'll meet up with y'all once I'm in the Berg. So, had a good lunch in Harrisonburg with Jake. We got a beer at Jack Brown's Beer and Burger Joint and a burger, of course. I uh, had the Cobra Kai, which is a burger with hot pepper jelly, pickled jalapenos, and cream cheese on it. Sounds kind of weird, but it's fire. Um, if you're in Harrisonburg or any of the other cities in the Appalachians that have a Jack Brown's, I highly recommend you go. Right now, Roni and I are stopped at this overlook. I got him some lunch, but he doesn't seem too hungry. Um, but I found it interesting that I didn't even realize on my route. Right now, we're on Shenandoah Mountain, which is actually in the George Washington National Forest, not in Shenandoah National Park, which can kind of be misleading. But there's a uh, species of salamander that only lives on Shenandoah Mountain called the Shenandoah Mountain Salamander. Not to be confused with the Shenandoah Salamander, Plethodon Shenandoah, it's actually um, Plethodon, Virginia. I'm not gonna go and find that one because I've already uh, seen it before and it's really just a little gray salamander. If you're familiar with the salamanders of the region, it basically looks like a leadback phase redback salamander. But right now we're on the way to go look for the Whirls Salamander, or Plethodon Whirly Eye. I've been searching for them uh, about four or five different times over the past year and still haven't had any luck. So, hoping I have some luck tonight. I think I got some good spots. So, uh, we'll see what happens. I'll meet up with you when we're looking for the Whirl Salamander.
very happy guy right now. Finally got plused on Whirly Eye, and I found not one, but two. They were both pretty small individuals, but hey, I'm gonna take it. A Whirly Eye is a Whirly Eye. Just gotta go more west into West Virginia. Right now, I'm just over the border into West Virginia, and I'm just going a little bit further on Sheet Mountain, which is the mountain that the salamander is named after. So I'm hoping that I'm gonna find some there. We'll see. got our two goals of the day got the cheap mountain salamander and the world salamander i'm pretty sure that i just found a huge world salamander up here so i guess i didn't have to go to that first spot but whatever got both of my goals super hype that last desmognathus no idea no idea like a gold bright yellow salamander up here in the spruce fir on cheap mountain if uh i know what it was you would have already seen the clip and i put it in there if not the best I can do is the genus, and it was definitely Desmognathus, but as those salamanders go, I'm real bad at IDing them, and I've never heard of like a bright yellow one like that. So we'll see if I can figure out what it was. If so, you already would have seen what it was, but still really pretty cool salamander. Super yellow, orange, sweet. Honestly, this place most closely to me resembles uh, Roan Mountain because Roan Mountain has a spruce fir environment as well. The only difference is between Roan Mountain and here is that there's not as much moss on Roan Mountain and it's more so covered in the needles from the spruce trees. So that's the only real difference I'm seeing. But these high elevation forests, are really neat with that regeneration of all the small spruce trees and then all these big ones you can see behind me like that so really cool area and whenever you go this high in elevation it's just really brisk and nice weather up here nice and cool i mean it's mid-may so it's not it's supposed to be too hot right now but it'd be a lot more warm if we were at a lower elevation so pretty cool stuff
my god. Day one, buddy. Really? Really? Nice go. Ah, 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 ah. Daddy came prepared this time with a towel because he knew you were going to roll around in a pile of crap. Yep. Yep. there's going to be any poop at the top of Cheat Mountain. Stand corrected, the hound dog found it. Alright. You're a sicko. Yeah, you're a sicko. Alright. Ron and I are in the tent for the night. We've made up. He just likes to roll in poop a lot. I can't fault him for it. He's a hound dog. That's what hound dogs do. Although I don't like it. Right? Because it makes daddy nervous. Because you get cold on nights like this. When we're up here on top of the mountain, you gotta stay warm, I know. Luckily, we were close to the car, so I was able to get him washed off pretty good. Not good enough, but you know, it's all right. It's all right. We'll get you cleaned off tomorrow and more. Yeah, sit. Good boy. So, uh, pretty good day. Found all my goals. Found a few more species of salamanders as well. Got some Plethodon scenarius. Uh, the uh, Desmognathus that will go unnamed until the end of the video because I don't know what it is. And then uh, had some good food. Hung out with Jake. It's always a good time. Always a good time. So I'll meet up with you all in the morning. Sunrise was dope. Slept pretty good last night because it was pretty chilly up here, but like just chilly enough to where that sleeping bag was the perfect temperature. Sweet. I think I'm about to go to the car, have some coffee real quick, maybe some oatmeal, and we're gonna hit the road. And uh, I'm pretty excited about the next spot, so y'all will have to wait and see. Here we are at the Cranberry Glades. This is a botanical area known as a sphagnum moss bog, and it contains pitcher plants. Specifically at this bog, it has Saracenia purpurea, or the purple pitcher plant, and also sundews that also catch bugs, and uh, insects rather. 
And those sundews are Drosera rotundifolia, or the round leaf sundew. So Ron and I are just gonna walk along this boardwalk and I'll get some cool shots of some awesome plants for y'all. You may be wondering the reason why the plants here eat insects and it's not exactly eating them the same way that some animals eat insects for food it's for nitrogen the bogs here that are mainly made of sphagnum moss which is very low in nutrients high in acidity it has no nitrogen in the media that they grow in, which is basically just the moss. So they have to get it from the insects that they digest inside their leaves. Now y'all saw those big clusters of pitcher plants back there. And basically there's nectar around the rim of the pitcher plant and it's really slippery and the insects will land on it. And as they eat the nectar, it actually makes them a little woozy or kind of drunk feeling then they'll fall in and then it's over for them and they drown and there's digestive enzymes inside the water that collects in these pitchers and then it breaks down the insect and gives the plant all the nitrogen that it needs to survive. some amphibian eggs. I'm gonna guess that these are spotted salamander eggs or Ambystema maculatum. I'm pretty sure they've already hatched though. Here's a look at some of the sphagnum moss that grows in these bogs. As you can see it's comprised of a bunch of little heads that just grow straight up and they form these columns going all the way down to the water below and it kind of wicks the water to the top of the plant and really only the top of the sphagnum moss is alive because no light gets beneath down where the water is. As you can see, the sundews are very small, only about an inch across right now. 
they'll probably max out at about two inches across. It's just a little bit early to see them right now because they're just waking up from their winter dormancy. And basically these plants are perennials, just like a lot of plants that you probably have at your house. So in the winter, they'll die back and then come back in the spring. So that's why the sundews are so small, but they really won't get much bigger than they are right now. So I still think they're very neat though. Those ones are sticky on their glistening leaves and the bugs or insects will just land right on them and then get stuck and get digested right there on the leaf. So it's pretty cool stuff. So the next species that I would like to find is Plethodon polii, which is a recently described species, meaning before a couple years ago, it was actually still considered Plethodon whirlii, the species that I found yesterday. Now they realized that through genetics and pattern and where the populations are, um, they're actually a different species uh, than what we previously thought. Now, the difference physically between Plethodon whirlii and Plethodon polii is that Plethodon polii has two rows of yellow spots going down the back of it. Now, it's not an ambistomatid or mole salamander. As we've said, it's a Plethodon salamander, but it's very similar in pattern to that of Ambistoma maculatum, the spotted salamander. If you're familiar with salamanders, you've definitely heard of that one before. And they have yellow spots going down their back that are very similar. Uh, they're much smaller species being a plethodon and not a mole salamander. But that's just a little bit of info about this species. And they like to inhabit areas with shale um, a lot of shale cliffs and things like that where there's a lot of rock and it's a lot drier of a habitat than most salamanders in the Plethodon genus. And right now I'm on the east side of the New River and I have to get onto the west side of it to find the species because I'm 99% sure that they don't exist east of the New River. So. I'm near a town called Hinton, West Virginia, and that's where I'm gonna try to find some habitat where I can find this species. And that's as specific as I'm gonna get because I don't wanna give away exactly where this species is because they're a brand new species and I wouldn't want people that have uh, wrong intentions to get a hold of this species or find their habitat or just people accidentally destroying it. So I will be filming them, of course, if I find them, and y'all will get to enjoy through my video. So I'll meet up with y'all once I'm at a better location to hopefully find some of these interesting little salamanders. Blue house, every time.
doesn't look like I had any luck finding Plethodon poly eye. That was the one salamander on this trip that I was like 50-50 on whether I was gonna find it. The only thing I really had to go by was the general vicinity of Hinton and that it was a shale habitat lover. Um, so that's basically all I had to go on and I, I only searched a few spots and I wasn't able to find it. But Ron and I are going to be camping at McAfee Knob tonight. Um, we're not going all the way up to the knob tonight. We're gonna camp at Catawba Mountain Shelter, which is like halfway up the mountain. And then in the morning, we're gonna go hit a sunrise at the actual McAfee Knob, which should be beautiful as it was last time. Pretty pumped for that. I may stop at one spot on the way, depending on time. May not. Uh, you'll see in the video if I do, obviously. But I'll meet up with y'all once we're at the next spot. I did decide to take a pit stop before we get to McAfee Knob parking area. We're near Newport, Virginia now, going to a cave that I've been to twice before. And as you probably guess, we're gonna film some cave salamanders, Eurycia lucifuga. They're just beautiful red salamanders like the color of my shirt. I think y'all are gonna enjoy. I hope you guys enjoyed that. It's a pit stop I like to take if I'm near the area. Cave salamanders are super cool. I love how slow they move. It just seems like everything in the cave just kind of ticks at a slower pace. They're just really neat. Really tough to film though. Uh, I kind of wish I had a brighter headlamp. That'd probably make it a little easier to get a good shot, but I think those are definitely my best shots I've ever gotten of some cave salamanders. And I'm gonna replenish the battery in my headlight before I go to Petty John's Cave, which is at Pigeon Mountain, 
we'll probably see some more of these guys. But, man, that was cool. It makes up for not seeing Plethodon polii. Definitely a little bummed about that, but as long as I see a cool salamander every day, I'm a happy man. arrived at the McAfee Knob parking lot and we are about to hike up two miles to the Catawba Mountain Shelter and then in the morning we're gonna go up for a sunrise at McAfee Knob and some coffee. Forget the advantage of having a hammock is that you can camp wherever your little heart desires. But things are looking up, I think, because I think I just found, yep, a sweet tent spot with a fire ring right next to the dried up stream. But the water is flowing a little bit further down. So I'm gonna set up and I'll show you camp. All right, have you ever seen a more picture-perfect bear bag than this one? Come on. Beautiful. All right. Here's the camp, got a small fire going. Got my big Agnes tent here. All set up. This is probably the nicest I've been able to set it up to. It's a little tricky because it's a semi freestanding tent, not a completely freestanding, so Basically, there's three points of contact for the poles and the stakes that go in. And then you have to stake out the rest so that it's completely taut or it'll be super droopy. And inside here, I have the Kelty Cosmic 20 down bag, the Nemo Tensor insulated, uh, both new pieces of gear for me. Then Roan, who's sleeping on my bag instead of his. And then just the Thermarest uh, memory foam pillow. And then this is Roan's setup. He's got the Wilder Dog sleeping bag and uh, half of the Thermarest pad that I cut to size to keep him nice and warm. And that's where he'll sleep once I get into my spot. Then up here, I got 
hat, beanie to wear at night, Roan's fleece that I'll probably put on because it's going to get down to about 45 tonight. And then I just have uh, all of my stuff sacks back here with all of my other stuff sacks inside them for my sleeping bag, my tent, poles, everything like that. And then here's the rest of my gear that I got to just put away next to the fire once I actually head to bed. Then there's my bear bag hanging right there. I will say again, it was damn perfect. I know you can't see me because it's still dark, but it's like 4.45 and Ronan and I are hiking to the peak of McAfee now. I'll meet, I'll meet up with you at the other time. This is exhausting. Morning, man. Morning. How's it going? Good. You through hiking? Yeah. Hell yeah. What about you? Nah. Nice. Thinking about next year. Right on. It's worth it, man. It's yeah. beautiful. It's a fun experience. <laughs> Hell yeah. I think waiting another year would have been a better play, but it's uh, missing a little bit of that culture still. It's kind of a little a little hangover from COVID, but yeah. There's like still some places closed. It's weird not hiking with uh, any Europeans or foreigners. Right. It's all U.S. people out here, which is a little weird. But yeah, next year will be a good one if you go for it. Yeah, I think so. It'll be like the first year of freedom again. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's gonna be a fat party trail. <laughs> be wild. Well, good luck to you, man. On my way down, back to the car, then it's back to the adventure. But man, tough hike. I forgot la about last year. You you keep getting like higher and higher. You start seeing the trees get smaller. You're like, all right, almost there. And then you turn around again. It's like, nope, further up and more steep. But it's like the the one hike where I just don't stop. I think I stopped to catch my breath like twice, but I was just like full speed up the mountain. Don't want to miss that awesome sunrise, so I had to keep trucking, hit the inhaler a few times. I'm good to go. But we're going to head to Roanoke, get some breakfast, and uh, I'll meet up with y'all once I'm on the road.
All right, we uh, are at Scratch Biscuit Company. Got myself a nice tall coffee because that was an early morning. For sure. And then I like to keep it simple here. Got a big old plain biscuit and some strawberry jelly. Gonna be pretty fire. I'm gonna enjoy this and then we're gonna get on the road. I'm thinking uh, Grayson Highlands. I'll meet up with y'all once we're back on the road. Just got done checking out the visitor center here. Got a uh, sweet find, a guide to the salamanders of Virginia. And then this awesome sticker for Grayson Highlands. And now I'm gonna get back to the car and I think Ron and I are just gonna explore the park for a little bit. Only bummer is that the backpackers parking lot in the park is full. So we're gonna have to meet up around the backside of Mount Rogers and hike four miles to Thomas Knob Shelter from there. But that's okay, because I think it was about to be the same elevation gain and distance if you started in the park anyway. So no big deal, but I won't actually be parking in the park tonight. So I'm gonna get some shots of the park while we're driving through and then head over to that parking lot and start our four mile hike. hiking up to the top of Mount Rogers. And I forgot, I think I forgot to mention, the two salamanders that I'm excited to possibly see there are the Weller's salamander, Plethodon welleri, and the Yanalasi salamander, Plethodon Yanalasi. Both of their scientific names are pretty easy based on their common names, I'd say. Haven't ever been searching for the Weller's salamander, but I have a lot for the Yanalasi. Interesting fact is that the Weller salamander can only be found in the state of Virginia up here. I guess everywhere else is probably too low of elevation or just too high in latitude because we're almost basically in North Carolina, but we're technically still in Virginia. Just want to talk about kind of the reason why there's so much salamander diversity in the Appalachian Mountains, the Southeast Appalachian Mountains in specific. These are, for one, the oldest mountains in the world. You might think, oh, that's weird, because they're not really that high. That's precisely one of the things that points to why they are one of the oldest. They used to be really, really tall. At one point, the tallest mountains in the world. But over a very, very long time, they started to settle again because the plates that were colliding that created the mountains started to depress back down into the earth. So they weren't getting any taller and they started to get shorter and back when they were a lot taller there was a ton of high elevation habitat where a lot of these plethodontid salamanders that prefer these moist habitats that are a lot cooler than what you would find down in the valleys in this region and they could freely move between the mountains once the mountains started getting shorter dry regions appeared in the valleys between them and that created impassable barriers where these salamanders could no longer pass through. And where, for example, you had one species that could travel between a bunch of different mountains in a wide range, then one of these impassable barriers of dryness or maybe a river 
that formed in between them separated two distinct groups of the same species. And then over the course of a long time, these species began to diverge and evolved into separate species. Then you have species like the gray cheek salamander. There's a northern gray cheek salamander and a southern gray cheek salamander. They used to be the same species, but they got separated by the formation of the French Broad River that goes right through the middle of Asheville. So if you find a gray cheek salamander, because they look almost identical to each other, north of the French Broad River, it's gonna be the northern gray cheek salamander. South, I'm sure you can guess, is the southern gray cheek salamander. That's the best way to tell the difference between the two is just where you're at. You a hot dog. Good boy. Who's a good boy? You thirsty? Are you a thirsty boy? Give me cuts. You a hot dog, huh? What do you know? The first log I flip. Python well or I. Let's go, baby. I have to go to the summit just because of who I am as a person, because I'm this close and it's a separate trail to the top. I was exhausted before this, but somehow I got a second win, still still up and going from that four o'clock wake up call this morning at McAfee. So uh, unlucky for Roan, we're just gonna head to the top, come back down. I'm gonna check out the shelter. Might stay there, might backtrack and go back down to a little bit lower elevation because the environment has switched again to more of a bald at the top here, and there's not as much cover. It doesn't look like as good a salamander habitat, but I have to weigh the pros and cons because there's more people up here. Might be a good time, but might have a better luck to see Yonalasi salamander. I have another chance at my location tomorrow, but never know what's gonna happen. So I've been having such good luck here. Decisions, decisions. So Jake's been here already, and he told me, yeah, Mount Rogers, Grayson Highlands, easily like the weirdest geographic area that he's ever been. I would have to agree. I mean, we start out on a bald right out the parking lot in a meadow full of flowers. Then we get up and it turns into like a regular Appalachian forest with hardwoods. Then it changes to spruce trees, spruce fir forest. And then again, it turns into another bald. Now, We're in a dense uh, spruce fir forest again. <sighs> Dope. <laughs> Made it to the peak, and I think I'm going to head back down now. Definitely going to do a little bit of searching on the way because this looks like pristine salamander habitat. Don't really know if K2 
can get too high for these species. I don't think it can in elevation. I mean, um, so just going to look around a bit. I was having really good luck on the mid level of the mountain or like three quarters of the way up, I guess, you know, there's always some searching to be done in the morning on the way back. If I end up camping or I could go there right now, camp at this little camp spot I found and search around at night. So we'll see what happens. Y'all will be in check as the video progresses. I was talking to these two guys at the top of the mountain. I'm definitely a bigger amphibian guy when it comes to identification than plants, but I do my best. And they were wondering what kind of spruce and what kind of fir were up here. I didn't know either, but I put it into my plant ID app and the answer that I got was red spruce, which is what I thought, but I wasn't sure. So I didn't want to tell them until I checked. And then balsam fir. So if you're wondering, well, what kind of spruce, what kind of fir exists on the Mount Rogers spruce fir environment? It would be balsam fir and red spruce. I decided I'm just gonna set up camp up top here. I don't feel like hiking down anymore. I'll just save it for the morning. I'll do a little check-in for some Yonalasi in the morning, cause why not? But uh, I'm good up here, I'm getting tired. I wanna set up camp, eat some dinner, go to bed. Well, I got the tent set up and me and Roni are pooped out. So I'm just gonna make some dinner and then hit the hay. And then I'm gonna get up at whatever time I wake up tomorrow hike the four miles or so back to the car. And then we're gonna head in search of the green salamander. That's a crevice dwelling species. They live inside the cracks on faces of rock. Pretty cool salamander. Their camouflage is basically lichen. Um, which if you don't know, is, uh, whoops. Lichen is basically this stuff that grows on the trees and rocks and stuff. So, hoping I find that one tomorrow. We'll just have to see. Well, I would say this is an interesting situation. Yeah. Got some coffee going and some oatmeal. Gonna have a little breakfast, pack up camp, and then Rony Boy and I are headed back to the car. It's raining out, so Rony and I had to don the rain jackets. He's got his new one on. Hey, Bubba, you're looking good.
So I'm just stopping and getting gas in the town of Damascus, Virginia. And currently the Trail Days Festival is happening for the Appalachian Trail through hikers. And man, there is a lot of hikers coming through right now. It's crazy. I mean, everywhere I turn, there's just backpacks sitting around and hikers everywhere. It's awesome. Ron and I have arrived in Kingsport, Tennessee, and this is where I hope to find the green salamander. This is the one salamander that I have been in search of for the longest period of my life. I saw him in a field guide when I was like eight or nine years old and always wanted to see one. I'm hoping that today is finally the day. What's really cool about this species is that they live in rock crevices so when you see like a big rock face and there's all those little cracks, that's the habitat that they live in. They don't hide under logs and stones really as much as they like to just stay inside the rock face like that. So it's pretty neat. They're the only arboreal or climbing species of salamander that we have on the East Coast. So hoping to see one today. We'll see what happens. Got him. The hardest part was actually getting one on film. Found three total, and the first first two were hiding so deep in the cracks, couldn't get any footage of them or get them out to film them or anything. So, super happy. Been searching for that species since I can't even remember, and finally got him. And on top of that, got a pretty good video of him. Awesome. The East Coast only arboreal salamander under my belt. this old fire road near Unaka Mountain. I'm not actually on it, I don't think. I'm just getting some water and I've scouted out this spot that looks pretty good for Plethodon Yanalasi habitat. The only problem is with Yanalasi is they say that you have to go at nighttime or you're just not gonna see them because they live in these ravines where there's like rock slides and all the rocks are covered in moss and they form these tunnel networks underneath all the rocks. So even if 
you flip a rock with one, they're gonna feel the vibrations and just go into their burrow to another area of the tunnel where you're not gonna see them before you even get that rock up. So I'm gonna camp up the road where I saw a ton of through hikers stopped at this camp spot. And once night hits, I'm gonna drive down here. It's only like two minutes up the road. I'm gonna drive back here with the headlamp and do some searching at nighttime. Even if I don't find any Yanolasi, I think there's a chance there's gonna be some cool streamside salamanders, like maybe some cool species of Desmognathus or some Blue Ridge two-line salamanders. Uh, Eurycia wildere, I think that one is. So I'm gonna get this water here filtered. I'm gonna set up my camp, and then I'll meet up back with y'all once we're at nightfall. to have some dinner here on tonight's menu is a lot of tuna gonna have two cans and two packets of ranch tuna and a couple of these tortillas I had those tacos for lunch and uh, I don't think I got in too much protein today, so I just wanted to get a little bit more in while I can. And then tomorrow, good day in Asheville for eating for sure. I've always said it's kind of odd that you're able to just eat fish on the, on the mountain. Tuna, which is in the ocean, but I'm all the way up here. Having tuna? I'll take it. Cause it's pretty good. Can never go wrong with a little hot sauce. And yeah, I'm opening a new bottle cause I've been out for like three days and I already went through a bottle of hot sauce. Cause that's how I do. And a little Buffalo Ranch tuna wrap. Fire.
Sick. Plethodon Yanalasi. Down in the books. Got a ton of good footage, ton of good photographs. Now uh, tomorrow it's on to Asheville. Ron and I are gonna head back to our camp now, have a good night's sleep, and then get up in the morning. Might be up for the sunrise, might just sleep in. Not sure what I'm gonna do yet, but I guess you'll see in the morning. to Asheville, North Carolina, and this is the city where I'm gonna get a lot of food because it's all super good. So first stop, we're at Biscuit Head. Uh, this place has really, really good food. They got biscuits, sandwiches with stuff on it and all this crazy stuff. But what I got was a mimosa fried chicken biscuit. And yeah, it is as big as it looks. It's got coleslaw, fried chicken on a huge cat head biscuit with a sweet potato puree and a egg on the side. It's hard to kind of see it there. And then I also got some of their banana buffalo hot sauce, which sounds really weird, but I promise it's super good. And then I got a coffee from Penny Cup Coffee Company. Uh, that's where Biscuit Head gets their coffee from, and it's super good. So I'm gonna devour this, and then Ron and I are going to head to South Carolina, west of Lake Jacassi, and we're gonna be in search of Puthodon Metcalfi. <laughs> and I have arrived at Lake Jacassi and this is where we're gonna search for Plethodon Metcalfi Clemson A coloration and I'm just walking down this little trail to see if there's a better overlook than the last one we got. I think there is. So that'll be cool. And then I'm gonna backtrack up the road and find some good forest to search for. Wish me luck. Hope I see him. Let's take a look at this overlook. Given that that was a regular coloration, we might be in the wrong spot, but I'm gonna keep looking for a bit, see if we can't turn any up with the cool coloration. This is definitely an odd feeling, because I've already found two Pathanam Metcalfi. So technically, I've already found the species I'm after, but it's kind of like when you're searching for a car, and you found the one you want, but they don't have the right color. That's the situation I'm in. It used to be considered a different species, like I said before, but not anymore. So technically speaking, on paper, I found the salamander, but I really want to see one with that cool coloration that used to be called Puthodon clemsonae. So I'm gonna keep searching. Kind of forgot where I was. Then I remembered, oh yeah, three line salamanders live here. Or uh, Euricea gudolineata. And I came across this little seep and they like to hang out right on the edge before it turns into complete muck underneath the logs, but it's still wet. And uh, I saw these two logs and I was like, I bet you there's a three line salamander under there. Bam, literally the biggest one I've ever seen in my life. So that was a good treat. Oh. 
All right. Well, if it was gonna be hot enough anywhere on this trip with a river to pull that move, it's gonna be here. So, wasn't planning on taking a swim here, but apparently there's a river and I was getting hot. So there you have it. Now I'm pretty clean, even though I actually have a shower tonight at the hotel that I'm gonna get to use, but it'll be a nice ride back. Just gotta get my socks on, shoes on, and then back to a little more searching for some Plethodon, Metcalfa, Clemson A. Shirtless salamandering through poison ivy infested woods with your host, Frank from Frank's Frugivores. I found Plethodon metcalfi, so that's a win because I've never seen that species before, even though it's not much to look at, especially if you've already seen Plethodon montanus or the northern great cheek salamander, but still another species on the list for me. And right now it's two o'clock. I got the choice between trying more spots and hiking around more for salamanders. Hey, come on, Bubba. We're going back to Asheville to get more food and, uh, I'm not ashamed to admit, I'm just gonna go pig out in Asheville right now. I'm probably gonna start with some barbecue and then see what I'm craving and just give myself everything that I want today. Cause Asheville is still consistently the best food that I ever get out anywhere. So I'm gonna head on back to Asheville, get some food, then check into the hotel, get a shower, get some more food, probably some beer. So I'll see y'all once I'm on the road. That South Carolina sun's baking my car, boy. That was easily in the top 10 best meals of my entire life. Brisket, burn ends, and then those other things were called bear balls from this place. And they take cornbread, pulled pork, and mac and cheese, deep fry it, cover it in cheese sauce, and then put bacon on top of it. Cause all that wasn't enough, right? Wow. I wasn't gonna get that last thing, but then this couple was sitting there and was like, oh, you gotta get them, they're so fire. I was like, Guess if you're twisting my arm. So yeah, if I don't have a heart attack, I'll meet up with y'all later if I get some more food. I saw that there was a uh, beer that was supposed to taste exactly like PB&J, peanut butter and jelly sandwich, and God dang, they nailed it. I mean, the beer itself literally tasted like an entire peanut butter and jelly sandwich bread and all. It was delicious. And I got a couple beers to take home with me because it was so good. So 
Asheville nailed it again. Enjoyed our night in the hotel. We got a good night's sleep, didn't we, buddy? And uh, we're gonna head to the Natahala National Forest now. After getting some coffee in Asheville, real quick, we're gonna film the Puthadon Shermani and Puthadon Te'elahi that live there, or the red-legged salamander and the southern Appalachian mountain salamander. Then we're gonna head to Pigeon Mountain, Georgia, and we're gonna film the Pigeon Mountain salamander or Puthadon Petrus. And that's one of my favorites. It's another rock and crevice dweller like the green salamander. And they're covered in this mustard yellow color. And they're really big, just like the Analasi salamander. So really excited to see them again. Plus the geology of the area is just super cool. And there's an awesome sunrise in store tomorrow for us. Well, Ron and I are back at Biscuit Head. And I got my coffee here, just planning out my route. Um, gonna be passing through Franklin, North Carolina. Uh, I think there's two Franklins in North Carolina. It's the one that's on the west side in the mountains. Obviously, I'm keeping this trip to the mountains, so. <clears throat> Got some extra coffee from Penny Cup for my family and for me for after the trip. And uh, yeah, I got Roan here. He doesn't want to be on camera but just looking at the map. Basically, this whole area of North Carolina and right down here is the border to Georgia is where you can find Puthadon Shermani or the red-legged salamander. Basically, if I go to any peak in this general area, I'll be able to find them. So I'm probably gonna be somewhere around here. This is Franklin because this is where the Appalachian Trail goes through, so I know there's a trail. This orange is the Appalachian Trail, and uh, this is on the way to where I'm going tonight, which is Pigeon Mountain, Georgia. So that should work out nicely. I'll meet up with y'all once I'm on the road, and then obviously once I start hiking, I'll be filming a lot more. the Nantahala National Forest. Gonna do a little hiking around, hopefully find some Puthadon Shermani. So I'm out here in the Nantahala Forest and I'm searching for Shermani, not having too good a luck right now. And I'm flipping logs and then this guy comes walking by and I was like, hey, just so you know, I'm not a crazy person. I'm just looking for salamanders. And then he said, no way, I'm actually a herper too. And uh, if you just wanna Tell him your name. I'm Ryan, I'm through hiking. I just happen to be herping as I'm walking, so. Yeah, yeah. and he's been a great help. He's gonna help me uh, get a better spot. And he also showed me a couple spots to go search for some different salamanders tomorrow. So excited for that. Gonna keep on looking.
Well, a huge thank you to Ryan for giving me a little needed info about the red-legged salamander, Plethodon shermani. I wasn't quite aware that you had to be above 4,000 feet to find them, but as soon as he told me that, we hiked on up to 4,000, and there a bunch of them were. So good luck on your through hike, man. Appreciate it. And uh, I guess I'm going to head to Pigeon Mountain now, so I'll meet up with y'all once I'm there. here at the Crockford Pigeon Mountain Wildlife Management Area and we're making the hike up to Petty John's Cave. I did not go here last time I came to Pigeon Mountain. I was only in search of uh, Pe Plethodon Patrius or the Pigeon Mountain Salamander. This time I want to get some more footage of some Eurycia lucifuga, the cave salamander. Same one that we saw at the cave in Virginia earlier this trip. Cave salamanders in Petty John's Cave are way more abundant than that at uh, the New River Cave in Virginia. There was like a couple there, if you looked around real hard, at this one. I mean, every foot maybe, there's at least one hiding. So that was sick. I'm hoping those shots turn out a little better than last time because I got new batteries in my headlamp, so it'd be a little brighter but that was sweet. I love it here. That is one of the coolest geologic things I've ever seen in my entire life. And it just continues with 
the amazing salamanders that live here. But uh, I didn't see any over there. So I'm just gonna check up along the uh, wall as you hike past that lost wall part. Mosquitoes bombing my eyes. Um, see if I can find any now. And then Rona and I are definitely gonna come back after nightfall. And that's probably when we'll see a ton of them out and about foraging for their insect prey. <laughs> Juveniles out in the middle of the day. Again, these are nocturnal salamanders as far as I'm aware. And they're out in the middle of the day. I think it's super weird, but also super awesome because I get to come out during the day, find juveniles that are out and about, and then come back at night and see the giant adults. And uh, I think they're pretty much tied with the Yanawasi salamanders as being the biggest in the Puthodon genus. So it's pretty cool. <laughs> Saw a couple, I think three or four juveniles. Was able to film most of them. And I think it's time to set up camp. So Ron and I are gonna drive to the top of the mountain, set up our tent, and I'm gonna cook a little dinner, give Roni his. And then after nightfall, we're gonna come back, see all the salamanders emerge. And I always find it amazing with any species, how well they're able to hide during the day. You might see a few if you flip some logs or like here, you might see a few juveniles out there in the day, which I'll say again, is super weird. But for the most part, the best salamandering I've ever done is right after nightfall when it gets dark. And that's when sometimes I'll just see one salamander like every two feet and you can just, walk along and pick them out. One, there's one, there's one, there's one. It's crazy. That's what happened here the last time. I'm obviously hoping it happens again. And I think I have upped my skills a bit on filming, so be able to get some better shots this time. Plus, fully charged headlamp. So it'll be bright enough to get some good footage. So I'll see y'all at the top once we set up our camp. Well, I'm about to have dinner here. I got two ranch tuna packets and two buffalo tuna packets, a couple tortillas and some extra hot sauce because I like it even spicier. And then I'm gonna have some more stuff later, but this is just gonna hold me over for now. This is a good way to get a high amount of protein while you're out camping or backpacking or whatever. And it tastes really good too. Get like a buffalo ranch tuna wrap going really ends up just kind of tasting like chicken at the end of the day but in these two wraps without the tortillas included there will be 60 grams of protein so right there that's starting off pretty strong so now we go on with the ranch packet a little bit of extra hot sauce 
if you're a psycho like me, and by a little bit extra, I mean a lot extra. And I like to roll one side, fold up the bottom. And then, bam. Pretty good. Gotta say, a lot better than it looks. Oatmeal's ready, super thick. Put three packets in this thing tonight. So I'm hungry. A lot of driving today. Um, the best thing on the top on the oatmeal is definitely the sunflower butter. My personal fave, at least. It comes out like super goopy. It's not a uh, thick, like skippy peanut butter or anything. I love that too, but um, it comes out like a sauce kind of. You'll see. Yeah, super good. Get a good dollop of that on there. It'll also give you some healthy fats for the day. If you care about nutrition like I do, then you know, you gotta eat your nut butters and stuff like that. It'll give you some healthy fats, good energy, um, good amount of calories so that you don't, you know, break down muscle or anything while you're out here. So there we are, gonna devour this and then Hopefully it gets dark soon. I'm kind of getting tired. I just want to go film those salamanders and I'm raring to, to go to see them because they are sick, but it's just taking forever to get dark. So I guess in a few minutes, I'll uh, probably get in the car, get everything cleaned up and then head on down to the spot. And then if it's still light, I'll just wait a few more minutes and uh, then eventually go into the woods and film some big honking yellow salamanders tonight. So stay tuned, we're almost there. Hot.
the camera to my face when I have the headlamp on. So I'm just going to discuss tonight like this while we're hiking back to the car. But I would say I didn't see quite as many individuals, but almost as many as I did last time. And when I say last time, I'm referring to my original Plethodon Party video, Plethodon Party and Appalachian Adventure. If you want to go check out more salamanders in a video just like this and go check out that or any of the other Plethodon Parties I've made. But Appalachian Adventure was the one where I came to Pigeon Mountain. And I have to say that one that ate that insect right off of the wall, that made my night right there. That was so cool. The light from my headlamp attracted the insect towards the salamander and instead of it getting nervous it stood there and got interested in the insect and then i blew at the insect a little bit so we go closer to salamander and then bam took him down that was so cool i can't believe i got it on footage but i hope you all enjoyed that shot because i sure enjoyed taking it so other than that highlights saw a bunch of really big ones with a ton of yellow and also a cave salamander. I didn't think cave salamanders would be over at that area, but I guess they're pretty widespread around Pigeon Mountain. So, yeah, we've done a number on the old Subi. Look at that dust. But it's starting to rain, so I'm gonna have Roni get back in, and I'm gonna drive us back to camp. Come on, buddy, hop on in. We're at our furthest destination. I'd say we did pretty good, huh, Ronnie boy? Good night, we are tired. Chattanooga at Julie Darling's Donuts and I got two donuts here. First is the pancakes and bacon donut. I mean that's gonna be fire right? And then a banana pudding donut with a no wafer on top. Oh my god. at the location that has an abundance of Plethodon Jordani and imitator salamanders, Desmognathus imitator. So, gonna do some looking, film what I see.
So we got to see three species of salamander. The Plethodon jordani, which was the main one I wanted to see. Desmognathus imitator, which there are many, as you can see, that don't have the red cheeks, so they're not actually um, imitating Plethodon jordani. But we did get to see one that had really red cheeks. snack where's that bubba we're just looking at that overlook from the last scene pretty insane crazy thing about the smokies is like you don't have to hike to even see this just drive right up Well, as you can see, Ron and I decided, well, I decided, I guess, to camp in the Linville Gorge Wilderness. So we're doing this little one mile trail. It was marked as moderate um, on the map. So we'll see how it is and then set up camp and make some dinner. Yeah, we got a pretty dope camp spot for our last night camping. Got all these crazy rocks behind me. And there's our tent. And there's the river. So water's right there. Only a mile back up to the car in the morning. This is great. A lot easier than the last time I was in the Linville Gorge, no doubt. I came from that side back there and the hike was like two and a half miles and just ridiculous so i'm gonna get try to get a fire going get a little food cooking and get roni fed and some water and i'm just gonna hang out until bedtime out tonight it's pretty good 21 grams of protein for like 
a little under 300 calories. Can't really beat that for a soup. You say goodnight, Rony boy. Good morning from Ron and I. We're still at the Linville Gorge campsite from last night. I'm gonna get some coffee going and then pack up camp. Then we're gonna head to Boone for some breakfast and stop in a few stores maybe. And then after that, we're gonna head to the Peaks of Otter on the Blue Ridge Parks Parkway in Southern Virginia. I'm gonna film some Plethodon hubricti or the Peaks of Otter salamander because I wanna add those to the video. And then after that, I might stop for one more salamander, but I'm definitely going to Harrisonburg tonight to meet up with Jake and we're gonna get some beer and food and just hang out. I'm gonna get a shower, it's gonna be nice. And uh, that'll basically be the end of the trip. So stay tuned for at least one more salamander today. And I appreciate you watching this far. Thank you. Peaks of Otter Salamanders Range, and Ron and I are gonna hike a little bit of trail, and I'm gonna flip some logs, and hopefully we'll get some soon, and then it's off to Harrisonburg. All right, we gotta try a new spot. So we're back where I found them uh, the other time that I came to find the species. I'm thinking we'll have better luck here. It was just way too dry at the last spot. So let's start flipping some logs. That's better. T 
two under the first two logs I get. I feel like this species gets overlooked a lot, but I love that brassy gold uh, pattern that they have on the back. Really neat species. That first one was a really pregnant female. Or not pregnant, sorry, gravid. She's full of eggs, yet to be fertilized, but must be breeding season soon for these guys. Well, that does it for the salamanders on this trip. I gotta say it was nice ending with a very uh, small range species that is very abundant where it does occur. That's Plethodon hubricti again, or the Peaks of Otter salamander. Very neat coloration on them. Just love those salamanders. So now I'm gonna hop back on the Blue Ridge Parkway, meet up on 81, and then head to Harrisonburg for some beer, some food, and a shower. like my trip comes to an end I'm on my way back to my home in Maryland but man I love finding salamanders not not just because I love salamanders so much and find them so interesting on their own but it just brings me to so many amazing places to go backpacking and camping and hiking I run into so many amazing people when I'm out looking for them this trip, I even ran into a fellow herper that I had no idea was going to be coming through. He was through hiking, as you saw, and just happened to go by when I had stopped at that one road stop looking for that species. And, man, just what, a, what an awesome trip. Thank you all for watching. I really appreciate it.